In a flat in Moscow, Veronica Essen is giving away her belongings. I've done a lot of photographs of my stuff and I've put them on the Instagram page. She's had enough of Putin's Russia and can't get out fast enough, whichever way she can. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, run, run somewhere between the borders or I, I'm going to figure out some of this, some, somehow how to, how to go away. I feel that there won't be any happiness in Russian Federation for a long time. And uh, uh, this economical crisis will just be much bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, people are going to lose a lot of money. At the offices of the few airlines still flying to Russia, there are long queues. But leaving isn't as simple as hopping on a plane. So a lot of people here say they are trying to get out of Russia. The problem for us is they're not prepared to be interviewed about it because they're worried that authorities could watch that and then turn them back at the border. Some of them have got friends who have already got out of Russia, but they say they were closely questioned at the airport and had to prove that they are going to come back. Russia faces a massive corporate global boycott under severe Western sanctions. In aviation, Boeing has suspended part supplies for Russian airlines. Airbus has followed suit. Car makers Volvo, Ford, Mitsubishi, BMW, Honda and Jaguar are suspending car exports to the country. And in the world of entertainment, Disney, Sony and Warner Brothers won't release new films in Russia. Apple won't be selling new iPhones there and is suspending Apple Pay. Young Russians are suddenly cut off from the Western services and products they come to take for granted. Uh, maybe I can with, without Disney, it's okay, but if without production of Apple, uh, I think it would be, it will be hard for me. You need your iPhone <laughs> and Apple Pay. And Apple Pay, yes. And today Apple Pay uh, didn't work. Stores are shutting. The Moscow Stock Exchange suspended trading for another day. An exodus is underway as Russia's economy begins to implode. And Putin's repressive rule only tightens its grip. Dominic Waghorn, Sky News, Moscow. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks and ETFs. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Ba'ashim Rakakwa Dash. Double honor, as always, from Yah to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who are the true teachers of Israel today. Peace, love, blessings. And salutations to the hopeful elect. How about y'all my double daughter, house of David? The brothers laboring day in and day out to make their call of election sure, help to seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord, Hamashiach Yabashai, is at hand. And to the Akim and Akwafim, which are the brothers and sisters who listen and believe on Yahweh Shem Yabashai to you, I say Shalom. So Shalom to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. It's the Brother Sagalai coming back with a lesson through the Spirit, Lord willing. This lesson is edifying for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, which is through the Rakakwadash. So we're going to jump right into it. We see, you know, that on the video, it was speaking about how Russia, you know, is, is, is taking a hard hit from the, the sanctions that have been uh, levied on them by Babylon the Great, which is America, and the, and the beast, which is NATO and the EU. You know, who are systematically destroying Russia from the sanctions, which this further proves, you know, who the beast and who the whore is that rides the beast. The whore being America, Babylon the Great, and the beast system, the seven heads and ten horns, you know, the EU, the European Union, and NATO, right? So this further goes to show that they can, you know, systematically destroy and implode you know, a whole country from within. Now, as we read here, you know, the effects of, the, of these sanctions are going to be widespread. This is from www.cnbc.com. As you see on the screen here, March the 6th, 2022, it says Stephen Roach says Russian default would hit emerging markets and China. So now you're going to have, you know, the uh, collateral damage, so to speak, that's going to come from these sanctions. And from this crisis that's going on in Europe, which is war in uh, Ukraine, which is being levied by Russia. So now 
as we coming up on about two weeks here and another day or two of, you know, Russia invading Ukraine. Now we see the pieces of the puzzle and the long term effects. So I'll read a little bit of this article going into that a little bit more. Speaking of what's going on in Russia and what does it mean in general? Now, this goes on to say the key points effects from any default on Russia's sovereign debt as a result of the Ukraine crisis would spill over to emerging markets. It says emerging markets. So other nations, right? Uh, other nations, economic systems, which are tied. That's why it's known as the global uh, market. It's known, you know, as, um, you know, global, the global economy. So the money markets of the world, the economic systems are all tied together. We'll get into that here in a little bit as we get a few precepts. So it says effects from any default on Russia's sovereign debt as a result of the UK of the Ukraine crisis will spill over to emerging markets. Economist Stephen Roach warns and China would not be unscathed. He told CNBC's Swag Box Asia. It says the U.S. has sanctioned Russia, Russia's sovereign debt, while major ratings agencies slash Russia's sovereign rating to junk status, right? So the nations have come together, you know, the vast majority, most notably the EU, the Europeans, the European Union, and all those that support the European Union, and America, which is supported by Australia and New Zealand, and other nations around the world have come together to sanction and to destroy Russia. So what do you think the effects of this is going to be? You got uh, Vladimir Putin himself, you know, the, the president of Russia, along with people within his cabinet and Russian oligarchs, which oligarchs are just, you know, influential people, you know, um, you know, w w within a body, a government, a country, a nation that have great wealth. That term is typically given over to the Russians, but that's typically that's what it means, you know, in essence, influential people, billionaires, you know, people that are. Um, you know, our so-called job creators, the top uh, uh, investors and economists. So now, it says economist Stephen Roach warned effects from any default on Russia's sovereign debt, and that default would come from Russia not being able, you know, to to be a part of the global economy, which is what you see through the sanctions from America, right? That sovereign debt that they have, which all nations buy each other's debt. It's another thing of note. Which is why we see this is not just going to result in a few nations, but the whole world being affected, you know, you know, as things continue to be uh, prolonged, as things continue forward. It's not going to just be the Russian economy. It's going to be the American economy. We're going to get that here in the, in the scriptures here in a minute. So it says economist Stephen Roach warned effects from any default on Russia's sovereign debt as a result of the Ukraine crisis will spill over into emerging markets, including China. If Russia does, does default on its debt, there will be broad spillover effects to sovereign debt in emerging markets around the world. And China will not be unscathed from that, he told CNBC's Squawk Box Asia. But I'm talking really a broader risk. It says uh, guilt by association. Roach, a senior fellow at Yale University added that China cannot afford to stay in the stay in close alignment with Russia as it mounts this truly god awful campaign against innocent Ukraine right now. And the sooner China breaks with Russia, the better. And and we'll have to wait and see and watch that very closely. He says so. We see the ties between China and Russia, who are allies against America, right, and the EU. And we see that tie, uh, that the ties between China and Russia, you know, that that's that's being affected by these sanctions, and ultimately it's, it's going to cause problems with China. So you know, and you see that this is all putting the pieces of the puzzle together. That economic catastrophe is coming, which is prophesied in the Holy Scriptures, the time of Jacob's trouble, which is going to be, you know, the collapsing of the world and global economy. The world global economy is going to collapse. We're going to get into that here in a second. Now, it goes on to say, Sock Jin adds two China internet stocks to its common prosperity play. Um, Alibaba is set to report 
slowest ever growth in December quarter as Chinese economic headwinds hit. Goldman Sachs or Goldman says Chinese stocks are too big to ignore and names some top picks with serious upside. Why is this being spoken of? Shortly after Moscow launched its assault on Ukraine, the U.S. announced sanctions on Russia, on Russia's sovereign debt, as well as its banks and central bank. Since then, major ratings agencies Fitch, Moody, and S&P have slashed the country's sovereign rating to junk status, saying Western sanctions could undermine Russia's ability to receive its debt. Now, all nations have received and buy other nations' debts or debt. <clears throat> so this is cutting Russia out from being an, a, a part of the international system. And what does that mean? There's been a global boycott of Russia. Their, um, one of their biggest you know, assets is their energy, you know, which is their petroleum and gas, et cetera. And their energy, their energy has been cut by 70%, and grain is one of their major... Uh, producers that they're a major producer of is grain, you know, which petroleum and grain is being cut. Well, petroleum and gas is being cut by 70%. I'm not sure how that's totally affecting the grain uh, production. And then the major airlines you saw in the video, um, the vehicle makers that, you know, the most airlines are not flying in and out of Russia to other places. Although you saw people trying to, you know, flee Russia, Russian citizens. Telecommunications is taking a major hit. The sale of all goods, electronics. Um, and then we saw that the global, that the Russia's stock exchange, because of the, the, the global pressure, that the stock exchange has been closed now, you know, pretty much this past week. After the first three or four days, Russia's stock exchange has been closed, showing you that they're not trading. The other nations have cut them out of trading. Now, all of this, comes down to uh, proxy wars. When you look up proxy wars, common definition, it goes into a war of influence. What we're seeing is a war of influence. Now I'm going to read a little more and get another article. It says London listed Russia's stock collapse last week before the London Stock Exchange suspended trading in 27 Russian uh, securities. Still nearly all their value was already wiped out by the time the suspension was announced Thursday. High oil prices are uh, are stacked uh, are, are are stag and stag flationary. It says oil prices surged Monday morning in Asia after U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said Washington and his allies are considering banning Russian oil and natural gas imports. U.S. crude soared nearly nine percent, higher to above. $130 per barrel at one point, while Brent had jumped as much as 9% to about 128 per barrel. Now, put this into perspective, you know, just about a year ago, and on average, the barrel of oil hovers anywhere from around about 80 to about $90 per barrel. So now you see it says it's up to 130 which is why the gas prices you see being in national averages are up around $5, right? Even if in some places it's under five or high three in, in some states, the national average, when you look at a lot of the major cities, you know, people are, are you know, that where they make more money and where there's, um, you know, you know, a higher concentration of people in these metropolitan areas, et cetera. You're seeing that the pinch, you know, for this crude oil is costing them the price of gas to go up and other energy sources, which is also going to lead and pushing the cost of um, of actual gas, too, because, you know, there's uh, plenty of states and places around the world that use a lot of natural gas as well. So now, um, it goes on to say, after the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, Russia is the world's third largest oil producer. It's also the largest exporter of crude oil to global markets. So now, what is this? Uh, and this this word... Um, which is stag, uh, stagflationary. It says is when the economy is simultaneously experiencing stagnant activity and accelerating if, if, um, inflation. So that's what Russia is going is going through right now. You know, stagflation, stagflation. 
So that's accelerating inflation. The phenomenon was first recognized in the 1970s when an oil shock prompted an extended period of higher prices but sharply falling uh, GDP, which goes into gross domestic product. Okay, so now, what is all this that we see and what does all this mean? Well, let's get a little bit more. What this all means, when you get into it, you make sense of it, is what's going on, you know, in Russia as a result of the war that is waged on Ukraine. This is causing instability. It's going to cause greater instability, you know, as time goes on, which ultimately is going to cause more and more economic problems, which eventually would cause what? An economic collapse. So let's get into that here as I have as I, as I have this on the screen. This is a visual of what was in the video and what the articles were going into. Visualizing the state of global debt by country. Right? And this goes into the time since the demic started until now. Now I want to get right to the point, and it shows you the, the countries that rank the highest in global debt. And you see Japan, Sudan, Greece, Eritrea, Cape Verde, Italy, uh, going going down further and further, you know. Suriname, Barbados, Singapore, and Maldives and the Maldives. And look at the percentage of debt, right, to GDP. What you know, which is the amount that a, a nation that produces from, you know, um, its economy to what the amount of debt that they, you know, have taken up and bought and accumulated. 257% of Japan, which they're directly tied to Babylon, America. Showing you most of these nations are directly tied to Babylon, you know, Babylon the Great, which is America. They're over the 100 percentile. A lot of these nations have way more debt than what they do GDP, right? Or as much, let me say it that way. Now, when you go into, um, you know, the risk, here it is, of a high debt to GDP ratio, it says a rapid increase in government debt is a major cause for concern. Generally, the higher a country's debt to GDP ratio is, the higher chance that country would default on its debt. So these, you got these other economies, which is said, we read the article before that there's going to be an effect from what's going on in Russia to China and other economies. So these other economies are other nations that, you know, have a high amount, a high amount of debt to GDP ratio. So they have a greater chance, it says, um, to default on their debt, which is for their economy to collapse, ultimately, therefore creating a financial panic in the markets. So these these nations you know, have a, a worse chance with what's going on currently today. It says global debt reached $226 trillion by the end of 2020, so it's much more than that now. So the global debt, it says, is at $226 trillion, showing you that the nations of the earth, you know, are all in a situation where they are, um, you know, they are primed to collapse with this much debt, right? It's inevitable that Babylon the Great and the nations are going to fall because they're all tied together with this debt, this enormous debt, which without further ado, I get into the scriptures. I just had a few scriptures actually to go into, not many, but just a few to go into this debt, right? So now, as we go into this debt and... What it's caused globally, $226 trillion, right, and counting. You know, just in America, you know, if you look at the, the, the debt clock for the country, for the entire nation, it goes up. If you put in um, U.S. debt clock, it will show you that every minute the debt goes up a million dollars a minute, right, which gives you a, a real perspective of what's going on. There's another article here, which I'll get into in a second, but it shows you because there's sanctions on Russia, Russia, it says, is eyes sanctions and workarounds in energy, gold, and crypto. Russia switched over, uh, trying to go into the gold standard again, and then cryptocurrency. Crypto meaning something that's hidden, right? Something that's hidden, hidden currency. Going into these cryptocurrency, these, these new markets, right? Which is all getting into digital 
currencies. So what does all this mean? Right? I spent a little time going into this, and I'll get into this article in a second. What does all this mean? You know, let's get it real quick in the scriptures showing that this is all prophecy in the spirit. When you, you know, when you get into having an understanding of this word, it's all prophecy. Everything's already, you know, uh, been spoken of and how the world would be and why it would be that way. And here it is. It's the book of Zephaniah 1 and verse 10. And the reason it shall come to pass in that day. What is that day? You know, it's in the last days. And it shall come to pass, Zephaniah 1 and 10, in that day, which we are in the beginning, we're starting that day, that moment, that period of time, not a literal day, but a period of time is that day. Say of the Lord, Yahweh, it says that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate and then howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. So what is that howling from the second? And what is that noise of a cry from a fish gate? That's getting into the, eco the economic systems, the economies of the world. And the greatest of those economies, the number one economy on the planet is America. And then China has the second biggest economy on the planet, right? That's the economic and financial systems. So let's read it again, Zephaniah 1 and 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith say Yahweh, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate. Now, there was an economic collapse called the Great Depression in the 1930s. But as we continue to read on, it says, and that fish gate once again is going into the financial markets, not just here, but globally, which we're seeing Russia's financial markets being decimated, right? It says, and in howling from the second, what's going to cause the people to howl? What's going to cause there to be an outcry? That howling, a great outcry. What is going to cause that great outcry? Let me get this word howl here in the blue letter. See is that if they have anything for us that we can add. Now this word howl, it says howling, a howling of distress, wailing. What's gonna cause, you know, this distress and wailing, right? What's gonna cause the people to wail? So it says in a howling, which is a wailing from the second, the second great crash, right? The second economic crash that will be on the earth. Like it says in Revelation, the book of Revelation, there will be you know, the three woes, the first woe, the first world war, the second, and then the third will come shortly after, right? Now, and part of that is the economic system has been prophesied to crash as well. The second great crashing, it says, and a great crashing from the hills, these the, all the nations that are connected to uh, the global economy. The global economy is how all the nations are connected, right? Through their individual and collective stock exchanges, on each continent and globally, which they're all connected through trade and commerce and capitalism. Right? The whole world is following the ways of Babylon. So this debt-based system is about to crash. Now, I'm going to read a little bit in the, um, in the NLT. Now, this is uh, Zephaniah 1 and 11. I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, Well in sorrow, all you who live in the market area which would be all these nations, all these, you know, metropolitan areas all across the world, you know, from Tokyo to, you know, to Shanghai, you know, to, uh, you know, Sydney, Australia, um, New Zealand, you know, um, Africa, you know, and all, all the major, you know, uh, countries and cities. You know, within all of these continents, the, the, the EU, the European Union, America, Central and South America, the northern part of Europe, getting into what is known as Scandinavia, which is Denmark, Russia, you know, I'm just so lucky at Denmark, um, Denmark and um, going up into, you know, the Alps, the Swiss, um, Finland, the Finnish people, all up in that area, right? Known as Norsemen. So all these people all around the world, everybody's being affected by this. And in Russia, you know, I'm speaking of going into Eurasia, being a part of, of Europe and Asia, right? And that's geography, but also, you know, in relation. So that relationship that Russia and China has, you know, is going to be affected 
by what is being levied by the beast and the whore, which is going to cause more problems. It's going to cause more wars and rumors of wars, which we'll get to in a second. Now, back in Zephaniah 1.11, it says, Well, in sorrow, all you who live in the market area, for all the merchants and traders will be destroyed. And that, that lines up with Revelation the 18th chapter, which is when Babylon gets destroyed in the end. But we see the beginnings of the implosion of the world economic markets, right? Right, international trade and, 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 and capitalism and commerce, as I was speaking about before. So it says, all the traders will be destroyed here in Zephaniah 1 and 11 in the NLT. I'm going to continue on with verse 12 in the NLT. The New Living Translation, it says, I will search with lanterns in Jerusalem, speaking of the, the people of the Most High. It says, in Jerusalem, darkest corners, to punish those who sit complacent in their sins, which would be the two-thirds. The Lord's coming to punish those who refuse to return, who, who refuse to come back to hearing the words of the prophets, which are the words of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, which those are the ones, are the men that are settled on their leaves when you read it, you know, in the KJV, right? Because in Zephaniah 1 and 12, in the King James Version, it says, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves, that say in their heart, the Lord Yahweh will not do good, neither will he do evil. A lot of our people don't believe in the words that's found in this book that evil times are coming. They believe the Most High is neutral. So let's read it again in the NLT, which I have them here in my blue letter side by side. Zephaniah 1 and 12 again, I will search with lanterns in Jerusalem's darkest corner to punish those who sit complacent in their sins, which is two thirds. They think the Lord Yahweh will do nothing to them, neither good or bad. See, a lot of our people don't think that the Most High is actually going to act they believe that his word will come back unto him void because when they hear the words of the prophets, they disregard the words of the men of the Lord, you know, which have been sent by, through the spirit, right? These are the men whose pineal glands have been opened, whose minds and spirits have been opened to receive this truth and the believers to, uh, to be able to, to hear, understand, and believe and perceive these words, being of the most high. So all the believers, they're against, they're against this, this truth movement. You know, they're against, they're anti-Hamashiach. They're against the coming of the Messiah, which is why the Lord is going to destroy them. It won't be no cloak for their sins because the truth is highly accessible, you know, for those that uh, that have eyes to see and ears to hear, right? Everybody has literal eyes, eyes and ears, but those who are in tune in the spirit, those that truly believe in the Lord. Now, Zephaniah 1 and 13 in the NLT, I'm going to continue on to read now. It says, so their property will be plundered, their homes will be ransacked, they will build new homes, but never live in them, they will plant vineyards, but never drink wine from them. That terrible day of the Lord, Yahweh is near, so the terrible day of the Lord is near, which is going to be, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble, which part of that is going to be the, the, the decline and, and the implosion of the economic systems of the world, Right? That, that howling from the fish gate. It says that terrible day of the Lord, Zephaniah 1 and 14 in the NLT, is near, and that's what we're seeing. It says, swiftly it comes, a day of bitter tears. See, that time is going to be a time of bitter tears. That's why when you, this lines up with many precepts, when you read the second Ezra, the 15th chapter and 16th chapter, the prophet Ezra said, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Because what did it say here? It says, swiftly it comes, a day of bitter tears, a day when even strong men will cry out, right? So even the strong men, it says, is going to cry out. And why is that? Verse 15, it will be a day when the Lord Yahweh's anger is poured out, a day of terrible distress and anguish, a day of ruin and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. So these are terrible times, right, that are coming to the earth. These are terrible times that are coming to the earth that's being prophesied. Now, how does Russia factor into this? Well, when we get the next precept, it shows you, and it was speaking, you know, in this chapter, and making reference to that um, the markets are going to crash, right? And in this happening, there will be a result, you know, as we read on the next precept 
from from this, this crashing at some point. You know, these are the precepts that line up to show you what's coming to Babylon the Great. Because the Most High, you know, has spoken against Babylon and said that the nations will be against her round about. So now, as everything's unfolding globally, you know, with the markets, etc., this is going to lead to more of the prophecies coming to pass. And here's another one. This is the book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter. And I'm going to start at the... Um, I'll get to the point. I'll start at the 17th verse because this is how this is how and where Russia figures prominently in prophecy. Isaiah 13 and 17 says, look, I will stir up the Medes, which are the Russians. Right. So we, we're seeing Russia's economy being attacked and their and their, you know, their, their economy is collapsing. Their money is worthless right now. It says, look, this is in the NLT. Isaiah 13 and 17. Look, I will stir up the Medes. And let's get that word for stir up. The Lord says he's going to stir up the Medes, which is what we see going on right now. Right? They're being stirred up. Let's see if I can get it. Um, so it's not coming up. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. It says stir up. Um, I'll just keep keep reading it. it. It wouldn't come up. This is Isaiah 13 and 17. It says, look. I will stir up. Let me get it over here. On the, let me get it in the, in the um, yeah, here, here we go. This is uh, the word for stir up in, in the, the verse Isaiah 13 and 17, verse 17. It says, I will stir up. Let's get that word for stir up. It says to rouse, to rouse oneself, to awake, to awaken, right? To stir up, to incite. So now it means, um, it says to act in an aroused manner, to awaken. So the Lord says he's going to wake up, stir up, bring back to life. That lines up with what? Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, he's going to put hooks back in the jaws, right? To put hooks back into the jaws, uh, into the jaws of the land of Gog and Magog, which is Russia. That's the land that they currently occupy, which are the Medes. Now it says, look, I will stir up the Medes, which are the Russians, against Babylon. So what we're seeing is the Lord stirring up. The Russians, the Medes against Babylon, which is America. That prophecy is going on right now as we speak. Now, at different times, there's been encounters. The Cold War was part of that. But we see that in the last days, this stirring up will cause a complete coll a collapse, you know, <clears throat> of the world economies, which that's, that's that's going on now through Russia, as we see all the pieces to the puzzle come together. Now, going back to Isaiah 13 and 17 in the NLT, it says, look, I will stir up the Medes against Babylon. They cannot be tempted by silver or bribed with gold. Speaking of the money. Now, part of that, as we can see now through the spirit, is the fact that the Russians' economy is being destroyed. So what do you think that they're going to do in retaliation? The same thing with, with, with the Iranians who said that they were going to avenge Qasem Soleimani, one of their generals that was killed in a drone attack by, by the Americans. Right? And then the Chinese, etc. So you have plenty of uh, uh, same thing in Syria. The instability that's in the country of Syria is caused by America. So, you know, it talks here about how they won't be tempted or bribed with gold or silver, which that spirit is being stirred up to, to think that evil thought, as it says in, uh, I quoted it a little earlier, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. Now, I'm going to continue to read down to verse, uh, let's say, 19. Isaiah 13 to 18 in, in the NLT, it says, The attacking armies will shoot down the young men with arrows. They're going to be killing in death. There's going to be an invasion as we keep reading, an invasion of his land, which lines up once again with Ezekiel 38, you know, because it tells you they will come over like a cloud, like a storm, and that they would invade this land, which also lines up with Isaiah the 47th chapter, when you read it from the top, Right? That tender, delicate woman, you know, thinking that she was never going to see the sorrow or that America was ever going to be touched. Now, it continues on to say, Isaiah 13 to 18 in the NLT, the attacking armies will shoot down the young men with arrows. They will have no mercy on the helpless babies. They're going to put people to death. Now, in the KJV here, it says, their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. So that's the babies, the young people, right? Now, didn't the Lord say in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, 
that he was not going to spare women, maids, which are young women, children, old men, right? So this lines all up. These are the precepts. It says, going back to Isaiah 13 and 18, the latter part in the NLT, it says, they will have no mercy on the helpless babies and will show no compassion for children. Verse 19, Babylon is showing you that the Medes are going to invade Babylon and it's going to be an a company, you know, of, of uh, foreign troops that's going to be a part of that. Babylon, which is America, the glorious, the most glorious of kingdoms, which they are the head, right? They are that high mountain, the highest mountain, the highest government, the rulers of the earth. Babylon, the most glorious of kingdoms, the flower of the Chaldean pride, will be devastated, will be devastated like Sodom and Gomorrah when the Most High destroyed them. So this place is going to be devastated. It's going to be raided, you know, by foreign troops. It's going to come into this land and they're going to put to death. That's going to be part of the judgment of the Lord. That's part of the time of Jacob's trouble. As it reached higher, as as it as the the heights of Jacob's trouble come to the climax, which is going to be the missiles, it's going to destroy this place, right? So part of that is this land will be invaded. Thus saith the Lord, the land of prophet. I mean, this is a, a land that's been prophesied to be destroyed. So now, as you continue, as we continue on, it tells you that Babylon is going to be in, invaded. Let's get that a little bit more. The reason why all of this is going to happen. Now, what Babylon is doing is destroying right now the economic system of the Medes, which are the Russians in the Bible. Now, one of the things that's going on with that is that ultimately Babylon herself is in a lot of debt. Is in a lot of debt, Salakia. So the debt that Babylon has, you know, they won't never be able to pay up. So that's ultimately why th these nations are not going to re regard silver or gold. And they're going to switch and, and try to force everybody to go to this digital currency. But they're, they're not going to regard it. Right? That evil thought is going to be in their heart. They're going to invade this land and, and eventually shoot missiles on it. Now, this is the book of Habakkuk 2. And um, I'll start at verse 6 and get to the point. Habakkuk 2 and 6. And... I read it in the KJV. It says, shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. Speaking of Babylon the great, right? Speaking of Esau, how long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Now, I'm going to read it in the K in the, uh, in the NLT now. Habakkuk 2 and 6, but soon their captives will taunt them. And who are they taking captive? The children of Israel, right? Habakkuk 2 and 6 in the NLT, but soon their captors, speaking of the children of Israel, will taunt them. And that's going on now. They will mock them saying, what sorrow awaits you thieves? The house of the thief, speaking of Esau, they are those thieves, right? That are going to be recompensed by Yahweh Shem Yahweh Now you will get what you deserve. You've become rich by extortion, Right? And that, go, that lines up with um, the 10th chapter of um, uh, Sirach, the 10th chapter, the 8th verse, where it tells you it tells you virtually the same thing, you know, by unrighteous dealing and riches gotten by deceit. That's an extortion. Now I'm reading it again, Habakkuk 2 and 6 in the NLT. You've become rich by extortion, but, but how much longer can this go on? Right? How much longer is this going to go on? We're at the end of it, right? Now, let's read um, Let's read that again. It says, But soon their captors will taunt them. They will mock them, saying, What sorrow awaits you thieves? Now you will get what you deserve. You've become rich by extortion. But how much longer can this go on? So this will not be going on much longer. Upon seeing these prophecies come to pass, we are in the last of the end time prophecies. So, now... When it spoke about, um, in verse 6, when you read it in the KJV, it says, um, How long and to him that ladeth himself with thick clay, when you look up the thick clay, which I'll do here, how long can it go on 
with their own debt, right? China and different nations own a lot of America's debt. So if they made America pay up, which Russia is going to forfeit, looking to forfeit on their debt because of what's going on. How, how much longer before all of these factors and collateral damage come to Babylon? So this is the Lord doing what he said he was going to do, which was he's going to bring chaos to the world that has never been seen when you read Daniel 12 and 1, right? The, time, the kind of turmoil that's coming to the earth that the earth has never seen is going to be because the world economies are going to be, you know, destroyed. Now, this is the word, the thick clay, H5671. It says the weight of pledges, heavy debt, thick clay, collectively. It says something pledged, i.e. collectively. It says pawn goods, thick clay. And those pawn goods and thick clay is getting into the debt, which all the nations collectively, I read earlier, it said $226 trillion worth of debt. And that was as of 2020. So those numbers are much higher. They're more heavily inflated too because of inflation as well. So the thick clay, the heavy debt of Babylon is going to be ultimately its doom and why this debt-based system is going to fail, right? Now I'm going to get into this article because this video went on, you know, quite a bit. And, um, but it just goes into the fact, you know, of what's going on with the EU level, um, uh, levy and these heavy sanctions in America, right? So with that, Russia is looking to work around what's going on, right? And energy, gold, and crypto, going into cryptocurrency and the gold standard, you know, and in energy, They're looking to go around Babylon and with their other trading par uh, partners, which part of their trading partners is the BRICS, you know, the BRICS, um, the BRICS um, partnership, B R I C S, BRICS, which is short for um, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So they have other trading partners that they've aligned with, you know, over the last handful of years, knowing that they were going to make certain moves like the moves they're making now, which is invading Ukraine. You know, so with that, I hope that was edifying. To the, to the brothers and sisters, the Akim and Akwafim, who viewed the lesson. All praises be to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honor to the elders and apostles, peace, love, blessing, and salutations to the hopeful elect, Habayah from Adabadah, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out to make the call of election sure, help us seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai is in hand, and to the Akim and Akwafim, which are the brothers and sisters who listen. And truly believe on the gospel of Yahweh Bashim Yabashai that's being preached in the four corners of the earth. To you I say shalom. So shalom to the whole four land.